What's up everyone? As you probably know by now, I am the Kaiju no Kami, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a very special anime to review, one that was a Patreon request by Pasta Cat technically a long time ago, but it wasn't available for me to review, so he decided to do Magic Knight Ray Earth instead, and that is the anime adaptation of Gridman, SSSS Gridman, or as I end up calling it at times, just SSSSSSSSSS Gridman because there's a lot of S's in that thing at times, and your mind just keeps on going with the S's before you're like, oh wait, I should have stopped at four. For those not in the know, back in 1993, Tsuburaya had released a brand new tokusatsu series that resembled an Ultraman series known as Hyper Agent Gridman. The show featured a trio of friends who had to protect the world from an evil, stalker-esque introvert who would create monsters in a computerized world that could break into the real world if they caused enough destruction. Hmm, does this make him the original cyberbully? This in turn led to our protagonist befriending a computer cop that deemed himself Gridman, who would merge with one of the friends in order to combat the terrible menaces. It was an interesting idea, even if the execution was not always up to par. The series was then brought to America by Deke under the name Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad, who proceeded to replace all of the Japanese actors with American ones in a similar fashion to what the Power Rangers franchise had done. Let's Samurai, guys! I'll be a monkey's carbuncle! Yeah, let's just move on. I'm sure it was good at the time, but... Ugh. In 2018, Studio Trigger released an anime adaptation of Gridman that wasn't directly tied to the original show, while at the same time gave some good nods to it for fans of the original. I do want to mention that this show is chock full of Transformer references. So many, in fact, that I could spend the next hour talking about them all instead of reviewing the show, and I don't want to do that. So if you're really curious to know what they are, go check those out for yourself online. This is about the review. And with that in mind, how is the anime version of Gridman? Let's take a look at the show's heroes to find out. The Heroes Like with the original series, this adaptation also features three high school students who are the main protagonists, although there are a couple of other side characters and a quartet of boys and stuff that show up. So it's not just the three and that's it. The first of these three, and the most important of the trio, is Yuta Hibiki, voiced by either Yuya Hirose or Brandon McInnes, depending on which language you watch the show in. No! I can't let this moment get away! Come on, me! Go for it! So, um, do you want to grab food? One thing to note is that both language tracks are absolutely fantastic, so you can't go wrong with whichever your preference is. Anyway, when we first meet Yuta, we come to learn that he has amnesia and can't remember anything about who he is or where he comes from. He does retain some memories, like which school he goes to and that his parents are away on a business trip, but that is about it. The advantage to this is that the audience gets to experience the world he lives in firsthand like he does, which allows for tidbits of exposition to make sense without having to hear the words, as you know. Yuta finds himself being able to see and hear some strange looking armored being on a computer screen at a cohort's secondhand shop who calls himself Gridman. I should also mention that Gridman Man's voice actors include the always delightful to hear Hikaru Midorikawa and Robert McCollum. Yuta. No matter how fierce the enemy is, we must face them and fight. It turns out that Gridman requires Yuta's assistance in order to travel into reality to fight giant monsters that begin to attack the city. From there, he receives a henchin bracelet that allows the two to merge whenever necessary. Access! Flash! The problem is it can only be done in front of this big archaic computer nicknamed Junk. As such, we get a hilarious situation where Junk has to be transported across town just so our heroic duo can transform to fend off a monster. Thanks for coming out, guys! Let's connect Junk. Is this the only solution? You've gotta do what you gotta do. Where is this? As for Gridman, Yuta is able to grow big a la Ultraman and use a variety of attacks to combat the enormous creatures. <laughs> He also receives a couple of upgrades as the series progresses, some of which is thanks to a quartet of assistants who call themselves the Neon Genesis Junior High Students. That sounds like a shitty band name. I wonder if they sing this. <laughs> this group is comprised of the overly large Max. Asking myself, how would I? 
Tell me this, do you normally ask strangers how your friends are doing? The Beyond Lazy bit. Whenever you feel like it! <sighs> My turn. Okay, okay. Boar, who is anything but with his snarking, abusive nature. He's back! Ah! You get way too excited whenever your obsessions come up. What's wrong with that? And finally, the dude who always looks tired as hell, Caliber. Who's that? I have no idea. Caliber is my favorite of the four as I love how he will just throw our protagonist over his shoulder to get them to jump quickly. You come too. Let's go. What do you call that one, Stu? I think that's called kidnapping, Tom. While there isn't a whole lot of character development done for them, each member does get a great moment to show their personality shine, especially Vit. Yeah, excuse me. Do you guys have any more keyboards? Uh... If it's not on the shelf, then no. Each member acts as an auxiliary mecha to Gridman, with Max being a tank-like vehicle that can also become oversized arms to enhance Gridman's strength. <laughs> Vit morphs into a jet and allows Gridman to fly upon combining. As for Boar, he turns into a drilling type machine. Fusing with Gridman gives our hero a set of long range attacks and agility. Caliber has the simplest transformation, which is a giant ass sword for Gridman to wield. Now the four of them are able to merge together with Gridman to create the ultimate form that looks like something out of Transformers, yet in order to do so Gridman and his compatriots cannot enter the real world at full size. Doing so causes this to occur. Yuta's friends include the Ultra Series fanatic Shoetsumi and pseudo love interest whose mother owns the junk shop Rika Takarada. This duo is voiced by Greg Ayers and Joe Harris in English. Nah, we're done here. What? Akane Shinjo's already left to go home. Huh? It's a kaiju. The three disappeared and now the world's reset. But why would it target them specifically? Well, the Japanese voices are comprised of Soma Saito and Yume Miyamoto. <laughs> Both characters may not be much more than support, but it is their love and support towards Yuta that really gets them through each battle. Utsumi is constantly talking about how cool it must be to turn into a giant superhero and loves to connect situations going on with his beloved Ultra Series in order to help Yuta plan out attacks. Ugh, if only this were the Ultra Series, then the Kaiju would have some kind of weak point. Uh, you lost me. You never know. There might be aliens or something. <laughs> Why aliens? Well, if kaiju are appearing, it's only natural that aliens come next. What's also interesting is when Utsumi ponders that the kaiju are people who transform like Yuta does with Gridman, which causes some major repercussions on Yuta. Die! 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 Pull it together! I can't fight a human! Rika also wants to see Yuta succeed in stopping the monster attacks because it is quickly revealed that anyone who dies at the hand of a kaiju has their entire history wiped out. With only our trio knowing they ever existed, for example, a couple of their classmates are killed in the very first attack we see, and they find themselves being the only ones who know they were a part of their school at all. Do you know why there aren't any desks for Tonkawa, Toiko, and the others? Who are they? You know, the volleyball club. Rika, nobody in our class plays volleyball. Even their parents believe their children to have died years prior in a series of unfortunate events. Our girl died when she was in middle school. In an accident. In fact, the show gives off a big old vibe as the city appears to constantly reset itself after every monster strike, so no one remembers the attack nor those who were victims of it. It even happens to a group of college online celebrities where three of the four members are wiped out and everyone believes it was always a solo act while Yuta and gang know otherwise. That's weird. Where are the other three? Huh? What do you question mean? One. 
Arcadia is supposed to have four people in it. It's always been just the one. It adds a level of mystery to the show and is what drives Rika to assist Yuta in any way she can, for she does not want that to happen to herself nor to anyone else. I just don't want any more friends to disappear. I don't want all of our good memories to disappear. And for me to be the only one left who remembers, I can't stand the thought of that. There is one final aspect to her character that may be the most defining moment of all. Unfortunately, that would require me to go into some major spoilers, so I sadly cannot cover it. Nevertheless, once you see the final scene of the series, you may realize what Rika's true purpose was the entire time. The villains. The villains of the series include a lonely high school girl, an alien demon of sorts, and a lot of kaijus. The first and most important villain of all is Yuta's classmate Akane Shinjo, voiced by Reina Ueda and Lindsay Seidel. Lately, it seems like you've been talking with Hibiki quite a lot. How come? Akane is a huge kaiju maniac that knows all of the ins and outs of every monster featured in the entire history of the Ultra franchise. There is even a moment where she brings up something I just recently said in my review of the Ultimate Hero. Oh, it's Red King. Without a doubt, his third model is best out of all of them. You know what's weird? Red King's not even red. One of his variations was empowered. See, even the anime characters know what's up. She may seem like a sweet and innocent girl. However, do not let her public persona fool you, for she is one vicious psychopath. Yes! Yes! They're dead! <laughs> <laughs> Any monster she decides to sculpt out of clay is able to be brought to life by an alien-like being known as Alexis Carib. Instance and reaction! What motivates her to sculpt these monsters is to kill anyone that pisses her off, which includes some of her classmates for accidentally crushing a packaged hot dog she was giving to Yuta after it was revealed he forgot to pack a lunch with him. That's really nice of you. Not at all. Whoa! Heads up! I'm so incredibly sorry! And her teacher for bumping into her without apologizing. Uh, oh, hey, come on now, sir. Watch where you're going. Yeah. It's actually quite scary at how realistic she can act, as I'm sure there are many internet trolls who wish they had the ability to do just this. Well, I was thinking of killing my homeroom teacher with it. Oh. Who runs into someone and doesn't even apologize? So rude. You one crazy ass bitch! I know! I feel like this actually puts her a step above the villains in some of the most recent Ultra shows, as you can really understand why she is doing what she does, despite how messed up and shallow it may come off. There is a lot done with her throughout the entire series that keeps her interested and is what I wish Tsuburaya had done with Saki in Ultraman Rube. Aside from Akane and Alexis, whose origins I cannot speak on, there is another kid that was created by Akane who can take on the form of a monster known as Anti. His monster form is kind of cool looking and I love how he is able to adapt himself to take on Gridman and the Neon Genesis Junior High students. Anti was created to kill Gridman and nothing more. Thus, that is his sole motivation in life. He also doesn't understand what being a human being means, such as the time when Rika had to give him a bath. Are you going to school? Like you ought to? What school? Anti loves to eat and will resort to stealing if it tames his wild stomach. <clears throat> he ran away? Lastly, he's a very forgiving individual for he never takes offense to Akane for throwing her phone at his face. I said I was unable to locate Gridman. You could say her hatred of him is... phoned in. Did I just sell you on that joke? So that just happened. The rest of the villains in the series are a bunch of mindless beasts, some of which have vastly unique designs. We've got a mountain-sized kaiju that looks like a crocodile fused with a forest. How do you plan on fighting a kaiju this size? Two versions of this creature that makes me think of one of Shin Godzilla's forms. And my favorite of them all, who looks like an alien Metron in a clamshell performed a fusion dance. <laughs> the 
This thing is like wicked badass. The animation and music. The animation is pretty good for the most part, though it is far from perfect. The music just flat out rocks. The first episode features some really choppy looking animation where it looks like Yuta and Rika are freezing up and jittering between motions. By who? Who are you? Uh, look. Don't screw with me. What? I'm not kidding. I can't remember. There's also the occasional bit of animation that looks deformed or missing detail, as if the animators rushed through that scene to get it done. Hold on. That's all you're getting? Yeah. I didn't really see anything I wanted, so... You're lost. On the other hand, most of the fight scenes with Gridman look spectacular. My highest number of praises come from how grounded the battle scenes are animated. Usually in anime, they often make fight scenes look as outlandish as possible because, well, it's animated. Here, everything that occurs in the show feels like something that you would have seen done had the series been live action. The ground reacts to battles in the same manner it does in the most recent batch of Ultraman shows, and cards are tossed around realistically as well. It's quite fascinating to not see them take advantage of their animated capabilities. There's also a lot of great angles that resemble how cameras would be positioned during the fight scenes in the modern string of Ultra series. I am really impressed with how much Studio Trigger restrained themselves to not go over the top a la Kill a Kill and the like. There's even some bits of the show that resemble the same techniques that Kyoji Soji would often use in his directed episodes from the Showa era and Ultraman Tiga. Think they're having a good dream? A dream. The soundtrack, composed by Shiro Sugisu, who has done the music to both Evangelion and Shin Godzilla, is as incredible here as it is in those two franchises. It's intense when it needs to be. We have the most epic sounding music ever when Gridman and the Neon Genesis Junior High students combine. Fits battle scenes very well. To being laid back and calm when necessary. There's even the occasional piece from the original Gridman series thrown into the mix. The opening song Union by Okoto is pretty good, though I wouldn't call it their best work since I think their opening of the first season of Overlord is better. Nevertheless, it sets the show up for you and does it efficiently. <laughs> Maya Uchida's Youthful Beautiful is the ending theme, which sounds like your typical everyday ending song for an anime series. Not my cup of tea, despite there being nothing inherently wrong with it. The episodes. I've got a hand at this series. The first episode was a bit rough, but then every episode that came after was better than the previous one. Thus, my least favorite episode of the series is the first episode, which I actually hated immensely. My initial impression after watching this episode was, oh great, this is going to be a long series to sit through. Instead, I was pleasantly surprised as by episode 3 I was hooked. I'm not sure what it was about the premiere I did not like, I just didn't. It dragged on a bit, the first fight was really not all that impressive, I didn't care for Gridman's look, and it seemed to be generic with the amnesia aspect initially. I think it also didn't help that I was expecting it to be one of those one and done amnesia tropes where Yuta would suddenly remember everything by the end of the episode. I am very glad to see how wrong I was. At least it does have this funny line. For the record, we both saw Junk swallow Yuta whole, right? I knew that old computers were so terrifying. As for my favorite episode, that is a hard one because I really loved the 10th episode, but for the sake of avoiding spoilers, I'll go into my second favorite, which is episode 4, Suspicion. Two of Rika's friends, Namiko and Haas, who seems to be setting up the 2020 wardrobe trend, invite Akane and Rika to join them for a pseudo date with the four college boys I mentioned earlier in the review. You are gonna come with us, aren't you? We already said there'd be four of us! I'll check my schedule. Oh? This causes Yuta to think that Rika actually prefers older boys over those her age, which really upsets him. 
Does Rico like here. older guys? What's wrong, Yuta? You seem troubled. What? Me? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Additionally, because Utsumi has a crush on Akane, the two of them start following the girls around to see if they do anything suspicious with the boys, and for some reason, the Neon Genesis Junior High gang goes with them. This episode is full of funny as hell one-liners like this. Now to find which room Rika's in. In the shortest amount of time. Did you go to stalker school or is this a natural talent? An impressive battle. To being the episode where the Neon Genesis gang all try to merge with Gridman at the same time when they froze, resurrecting the nightmares of being a dial up internet user back in the early 2000s. But hey, at least it wasn't like in the next episode where Yuta was shocked to learn that a payphone requires money to use. There! Look! A telephone! Great! Now we can call them! Wait! You need coins to use a public phone? Overall, SSSS Gridman was a really solid anime series that also makes for a fantastic tokusatsu one. In fact, it actually puts some of the modern Ultra series to shame with its storytelling and character development. Thus... I am going to give SSSSSSSSSSS Gridman a solid, well-deserved 4 out of 5 grown-ups in spandex. Whether you're an anime fan or a tokusatsu fan, it doesn't matter. This is a show to not miss. It's a solid show overall, and it's just a fantastic time. Even if it does have a little bit of a rough start, I am totally looking forward to the upcoming sequel series that is in the works. Until next time, bye. One crazy ass bitch!